Hello everyone, welcome for this uh, live stream about Leach's Slicer, the latest uh, version. Uh, before starting, just let me know in the chat if the audio is fine, the video, the stream, before starting, just let me know. To be honest, we had quite some trouble <laughs> to set up this uh, live stream today, and then I hope everything will be fine. Okay, then everything seems to be okay. Perfect. Sorry, the screen for me is here with the chat then. Time to time, so I will just look at what is happening. Um, okay, then today's this chat is about, like I said a few seconds ago, about uh, this new release of Litchi Slicer version 5.2, in fact, .2 as well, uh, which has been a, a, a minor update, but we didn't really, uh, uh, we didn't really, um, we didn't do a big announcement of Litchi Slicer uh, when we released the version uh, uh, 5.2. It was mainly on Discord. We had new features. Now this is the time to expose them more to everyone. That's why we are doing this live stream. We hope to do uh, on more regular basis live streams about the latest versions or perhaps Q&A. Then let us know in the chat if you are very interesting in, in the chat just to uh, answer your questions. Uh, or of course, discovering more about Litchi Slicer. It will be very helpful to know how much we do about these streams. Uh, if, uh, of course, our English is fine because this is not uh, for most of the people in the team our native language. Uh, even if we have now people from the US and Australia who are able, of course, to speak uh, English fluently, then uh, uh, I'll do my best uh, to do something which will be uh, useful for you, and I hope you will learn a lot of things about Litchi Slicer and everything around it. I will just check time to time that I don't miss something about the cameras. Um, first of all, then, I'm Thomas. I'm the CEO of uh, Mango3D, the uh, uh, maker of Litchi Slicer. Uh, I'm first a user, probably like you. Uh, I love doing 3D printing. It's been a while. I'm doing 3D printing since... Uh, 12 years that I've been in uh, this industry, uh, and of course 3D creation. And uh, yeah, let's explain a lot of things. By the way, we have some team members in the chat, like Julian, who is there, who will perhaps answer some of your questions. Uh, and of course, I will do my best to answer some of them during this chat. Um, this live stream will be split, let's say, in two different parts. The first one will be a little bit of uh, industry, uh, uh, news about Litchi Slicer and the 3D printing industry before moving to um, this presentation about this new feature. Then I'll try to be quick for the first part. I guess you are looking more about uh, latest features of Litchi Slicer. Uh, we also have Coralie, who is from our uh, tech support team. Then, hello everyone. Um, Okay, uh, about uh, this news, about the industry, perhaps you have noticed recently that some uh, new printer uh, uh, arrived in the market, resin printers, and I will speak about filament printer just after that. Um, these printers, like next to me, I have the new, the latest, uh, Anycubic uh, M5S, uh, which has been uh, announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, something like that. Uh, and uh, you may have noticed that this printer is a 12K screen uh, provided very tiny uh, uh, pixels for your screen, uh, which are in fact 19 by 22, uh, 24, sorry, which has not really square pixels, but more rectangular pixels, and an average of 22 microns, I would say, for the size of each pixels, then 12K for a 2.1 inch screen for the diagonal, it's quite a lot of pixels. Then we can achieve very, very accurate prints in a medium size printer. And Yesterday, uh, uh, Elegoo did the official announcement uh, and, of, co of course, the, uh, the pre-sales, uh, uh, the early uh, 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 order, let's say, for the new uh, uh, Elegoo printer, sorry, uh, with mainly the uh, Saturn 3, Saturn 3 Ultra, which are also uh, uh, 12K screen, and also the Mars 4 and Mars 4 Ultra, which are 9K screen, but on a very uh, on a smaller form factor for the screen, which are roughly, if I remember correctly, 19 or, or yes, 19 microns. Then really 19 microns, uh, which is very very thin. We are uh, why this is exciting because of course. Uh, uh, smaller pixels mean a higher resolution for your 3D prints, way more details. And I have some print I will show that uh, uh, in a few seconds, uh, especially done with uh, the M5S. Uh, these are printers, obviously, that we are already supporting in Litchi Slicer. I will show that in a few seconds in the application. We, have, we try our best always to, be, uh, to provide as soon as possible the support of new printers, 
Sometimes this is, it can be fast, sometimes it's not very fast. We know some people are requesting printers in a while, but when we don't have the support from the manufacturer, it can be quite tricky. Anyway, um, then why this is also exciting? Because there is new features. Um, the last stream we did uh, was about preparing a 3D model, a medium size, to large size 3D print of Bayonetta uh, video game character. And I presented quickly as well the uh, Athena 3D printer, uh, which is on Kickstarter right now. Sorry, I don't have the link uh, there. Then if someone from the team can share the uh, Kickstarter link for the Athena uh, 3D printer, which is an AK printer, but uh, which was the first one to introduce a force sensor that you see also now in uh, the, uh, the M5S printer, which is able to detect when the printer is peeling or not the model from the, the, the FEP uh, uh, film, then you can detect some crash. And uh, you can also, with this printer, which is the first one, if I'm not wrong, uh, to have an auto-calibration system. Then you don't need to calibrate. It's print, let's say, out of the box. And then this Athena printer was the first one to have this force sensor, which is able just to stop the lift process when it detects that it just a peel from uh, uh, the FEP film. It means that there is no need to go higher, you can just stop and going down, which speed a lot the process. And then this M5S, and from what I understood, uh, um, Eddie will do the same with some of the printer. It's also a s printer which can be which is able, sorry, which is able to print uh, quite fast. Uh, I did this print for these segments, uh, which are from uh, an LED arch. Uh, which is uh, 190 millimeter tall. I did uh, 12 of them in the same build plate in uh, two hours and 20 minutes, 100 microns. I print that at 20 millimeter per second. Then the lifted speed is very, very fast and lowering speed as well is very, very fast. Of course, it's not designed to print at this speed for very accurate models, but if you want to do some prototypes, if you want to validate a concept or just checking the shapes or as the assembly of some part, this is very convenient. And that's why we are now this transition of gaining a better uh, accuracy for the prints and why it's important. It's better for the fine details, for the micro contrast of the surfaces. And on top of that, you can just stop using anti-aliasing because the anti-aliasing, you know, this effect to smooth the surfaces is just to fake a little bit the problem of the screen, which are in fact, in theory, white and black for the resin. And uh, it's not always perfect. And in fact, the real, def the real problem of anti-aliasing is that it will smooth your fine details. Then we are, 8K printers were most of the time fine to print without anti-aliasing. And now with 12K printers, uh, you can really just get rid of the anti-aliasing, which is really amazing. And someone like me who really likes thin, thin and tiny details, this is just, uh, uh, just amazing. So I'm looking just quickly at the chats. Uh, um, Brendan, who is asking about some, uh, uh, doing some temperature test, or later test and all of that. Uh, no, we, uh, we don't have this feature by default in Litchi Slicer. I speak a little bit more, of course, about the, um, uh, the filament uh, uh, after that. Let me just switch to another camera, uh, which is uh, just on the side. This is some print that I have on the desk right now. And uh, these are, the, sorry, let me just go back uh, to uh, my main screen, sorry. Uh, I was quite fast. Uh, I just mentioned this previous live stream about Litchi Slicer to prepare this Bayonetta 3D model. I just put uh, the, uh, um, that on screen and let me copy paste uh, that in the chat. Like that, we have the link. Okay. Uh, it was it was a quite long chat where I explained a lot of things about preparing your 3D model, about supports, hollowing, uh, uh, the concept of holes, hollowing blockers, creating some fans, really a lot of things during this stream. Then I really invite you to look at it, to uh, uh, really spend some time uh, uh, watching this stream. I, it seemed that it had been very informative for people. And anyway, uh, I explained how to prepare this 3D model of Bayonetta uh, from 3D Moon. And uh, like I wanted to show you now, uh, these are of course some uh, result of the print. I, oh, okay. The good thing is it will stop like that because my camera just froze. Uh, <laughs> then you have, sorry, uh, the head, uh, which is uh, uh, on the bottom uh, uh, center of, uh, uh, the image uh, with all the support which 
print perfectly fine uh, on the Athena 3D printer. Really on the right you have uh, uh, the bust, uh, which also uh, is really perfect. Sorry, I can't zoom in. Uh, I may try to re-enable the camera. I don't know if it will work. Uh, I will try just after that. Um, and uh, uh, you have now more on the uh, left side of the image, uh, you have uh, a set of prints coming from the M5S, uh, but printed at a slower speed. Slower speed, not that much, because uh, raising speed was around 10 millimeter per second. Then it was slower than uh, this uh, LED arch element I, I just presented a few minutes ago but fast enough. I printed a full plate with a lot of details at 30 microns resolution for each layers in six hours and two minutes. Then uh, we gain a lot of speed and I really like it. Let me just try a few seconds if I can re-enable the camera. Hold on. Is it working or is it working now? Perfect. Okay, uh, then you see on screen it's the bust which uh, uh, is it's very sharp all the details you see on the side. If you look at the face, there, you see all the supports. And I spent quite some time to explain these supports, uh, uh, why it was important to consider them. Uh, also going around the 3D model, I left the, the, the supports on purpose for you to look at them and see that I, I really try to avoid as much as possible uh, the model you can see on the side for the, the hairs. And then uh, for the M5S, sorry, you may not really see that on screen. I just try to find a good lighting, but you can see on the bust, uh, there is a lot of very small details on the clothes, on the fabric. And uh, it's not very nice on screen, but really when you look at that, uh, it's really amazing. And you have all this uh, part of the print. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to, let me just move this one. You see all the parts. And uh, uh, sorry, it's not that good <laughs> when you look on screen, but it's really, really amazing when you look at that. Uh, um, I'm blown away. <laughs> uh, for me, it's really something that uh, I really, really uh, enjoy about all these printers. Sorry, it was a lot of talk, but yes, Meo, uh, Meo Cat, uh, um, it was not 10 millimeter, but yes, this print was 10 millimeter per second. Uh, then uh, the bust and all the stuff I presented before, 10, 10 millimeter per second for 30 microns layers, which it, and I think it was 1.7 or 9. Uh, seconds per layer and the resin is uh, this one is the uh, frozen aqua gray 8k printer uh, which is this is my personal opinion this is not a lichy slicer opinion but this is one of my favorite uh, resin i really love this uh, uh, this resin i use it quite a lot and like i said all this one uh, uh, everything has been made with uh, this resin and for this one uh, the, the 20 millimeter per second, which is, like I said, quite very fast. Uh, it's uh, with the resin provided by uh, any cubic, which is an ultra fast resin, which is like water. Uh, this is uh, really fluid, not uh, a lot of viscosity in the, 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 the resin, but I'm pretty sure we can achieve such result with other resin. And I think I will try with this aqua gray uh, 8K resin, which is, like I said, one of my favorite. Anyway. Uh, sorry, a lot of talk uh, about uh, uh, everything, but what I wanted to uh, uh, explain, let me just go back to Lichy Slicer. Uh, like I told you a few seconds ago, if you look at uh, the 3D printers I have on my screen, there is already this Anycubic uh, Photon Mono M5S and all the new Anycubic printers as well. Uh, the Mono X uh, uh, 6S as an example, uh, the Saturn 3 Ultra, uh, the Saturn 3 uh, as well. Then if this is very easy to add them, you click on add uh, Anycubic, all the printers, it's already a lot of printers that we are supporting. You see this Anycubic Photo Mono X 6KS, or uh, as an example, like I said, Elegoo, we have all of them, uh, including the new Mars, new, almost uh, uh, available uh, Mars 4 Ultra and so on. And what I, what I really like, and uh, in Litchi Slicer, I will just move a little bit about the new feature, which is not new, is, okay, I would like for the Anycubic Photo M5S, uh, getting some settings parameters. Um, and you have in Litchi Slicer, uh, sorry, for the resin, let me add a new resin, we have the community resins. And 
we already have a few profiles from users, probably uh, earlier users, influencers, and beta testers. Some uh, print which has been done with the uh, uh, Photon Mono M5S. And on my end, if I'm looking about the Anycubic resin, the high-speed one, I just loaded, the gray hole, you already have my profile, which has been tested working fine, meaning that when you will receive your new printer, whatever, it's a, 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 an Elegoo or a, a Anycubic or whatever the brand, there is a high chance that you will find some resin profile which are already available. Uh, I don't know if I put live my uh, Frozen 8K. Yes, it's already there. So it was 1.9 seconds and I did also 1.5 seconds uh, uh, exposure. You see the speed which are quite fast, but these ones are validated. Then always feel free when you are looking about a new, uh, uh, you have a new resin or a new printer or both of them, and you need to find the parameters, always spend some time to go in these resin profiles, these community resin profiles. This is coming from the community most of the time, or there is people also who are validating uh, their resin, and you are almost ready to go, uh, of course. Let me close that. Sorry, a lot of talk about that, but this is uh, quite important uh, to consider uh, everything. Um, how we validate? Uh, there is a good question from Adam Ferguson. How do you validate a resin profile? Uh, there is multiple things. If you go, oh, sorry, this is a, a more a demo uh, a version of Richie Slicer. Then my story is almost uh, uh, empty. Uh, you see, when you are, uh, uh, you have. Uh, a print, you have this history asking you, oh, how was the print? And then you can define first your rate if your print has been a success or not. In fact, this is not if your print has been a success. It's more if your resin profile is a success. Sometimes you may have a failed print, not because your 3D printing, your resin parameters are wrong. It's because, let's say, you forgot some support, or you forgot to hollow your model, or you, you misestimate something in your 3D model preparation. But sometimes you have a failed print, but the profile was good. And sometimes I have a failed print, partial failed print, because I did a mistake myself, but I did, for me, it was a success in terms of profile, and I click on that. Then, first thing, you can help the community by each time you, you do a print, if it's a success or in between or a failure, just rate your print like that and it will help the community to know, oh, this profile is working, I can use it myself. Then this is uh, a way, a win-win, let's say, uh, a system. And then when you, you want to, you like your resin profile, what you can do is in your resin uh, settings on top, you have this like profile, meaning that, okay, this one is good. I don't know which one I have. Let me just switch to another one. Uh, let me just add this uh, uh, frozen profile, adding this one to the Photon Monon uh, M5S, copy. Okay, this is there. And you can say, oh, I like it. As a user, I like it. Now there is two likes. The more likes we have a uh, resin, the more it will be on top of the list. And then if you want to do like I did with Mango 3D, or even my own YouTube channel, which is Poly Workshop. Uh, when you, uh, let me go back to the resin there. You see it's validated by Mango 3D. This validation is only for manufacturers or influencers. Then if you are, let's say, an influencer, you do a lot of videos about 3D printing on YouTube, TikToks, and so on, feel free to contact us, and then we can give you a badge, uh, uh, and then you can rate and do uh, things like that. As an example, yesterday, uh, Uncle Jesse did a live stream about the new Elego printers. Uncle Jesse validated some of his profile. Then there is some profiles for uh, Elego printers under his name. Then this is something that you can do if uh, uh, um, you, you can share everything about uh, everyone. Sorry, it was a lot of talk and I deviated <laughs> a lot about the news aspect. Uh, but as you can see, you can do a lot of things in Litchi Slicer already with these new 3D printers. Now I'll switch to, uh, uh, and to conclude with that, with the filament printers. Uh, it's not something really new, but mm, also the speed. Uh, you, we, we may have seen recently all these new printers uh, which are coming on the market from different manufacturers, even new brands, as an example, Bamboo Labs, uh, which are providing very, very fast printer. Most of them are based on Clipper, which is, uh, let's say, a 3D printing system which will manage uh, way better your 3D printers. And uh, this system offers a lot of 
technology, I would say let's keep that simple, uh, um, uh, uh, which will compensate uh, the acceleration, the vibration of your printer to print better your model and faster. And more and more printers are embracing this clipper system or doing things which are very similar, uh, uh, I would say. Uh, perhaps you heard about Marlin, uh, which is a system uh, the, uh, let's say the operating system for most of the 3D printers, which was slower, but latest version. There is new features which, which makes this printer also faster and faster. We can speak about printer printing at 100, 200, 500, 600 millimeters per second, which become very, very fast. Uh, you see this competition of Benchy being printing online, uh, which is uh, now uh, uh, all this speed is coming to the users, um, meaning that we can print a lot faster for filament by keeping a good quality, uh, which is really amazing. We will speak a little bit about that at the end of the stream when we will speak about these new features uh, about the Wi-Fi support in Litchi Slicer for filament printers. We will speak about uh, a clipper as well. But to conclude all this segment about the latest news around Litchi Slicer and 3D printing, yeah, this is exciting moments for 3D printing, and I really hope that you will enjoy all of that. You will spend uh, uh, more and more time in uh, um, this uh, uh, fantastic world of 3D printing, and we hope that Litchi Slicer will help you uh, be faster, be better, having better prints, uh, uh, being more accurate in your preparation. And let's see all of that with all of these new features of this, uh, I would say, intermediate version of Litchi Slicer. Um, now let's switch, of course, about these new features. Uh, we did this announcement uh, uh, as usual on Discord. Then if you are not on our, on our Discord server, please feel free to join it uh, because we do most of the time all the announcements there. Uh, most of the team is on Discord and this is a great place to discuss with uh, uh, everyone. Um, okay. Then let's start with uh, uh, all these new features. Uh, like I said, this is a point version then we don't consider that, uh, yes, this is what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, um, let's say, a major version. And uh, a lot of people sometimes say, yeah, this is a subscription. I would like a full version and paying for, let's say, major upgrade. The thing is, when we have new features, we don't have to wait for six months to wait a major version to release. We release all these new features when we want, when, when it's ready, I would say. Like that, you have access way faster. And we do also this public beta version sometimes that we do on Discord, then you can get uh, this access to these features as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, you, will you will be able to see this stream uh, uh, after that. It will be shared on, uh, I mean, available on YouTube as usual. Okay, um, then I'll start with one of the new uh, uh, major features, I would say from this minor version, uh, which are uh, uh, the supports projection. Um, we know that a lot of people uh, really enjoy using the automatic supports, which are fantastic if you want to prepare your model without having a lot of knowledge. And then we have a lot of users, in fact, a real lot of users who really like doing their manual support because you have a lot of control, really the full control of what you want to do because your eyes will help you to know where it's better to put supports or you will know where you will uh, uh, need to send your model or cut or giving access or you want to paint, then avoiding some places and putting the support where it's needed. Uh, like I explained before for the live stream of this model, I spend a little bit of time, not that much, uh, just to be sure my support will avoid as much as possible the model, will not start from the model to have less contact point, then less sending work easier for the, all the post process. But it can be sometimes quite time consuming to do all these supports and we always try to find solutions to help people doing manual support to go faster. And uh, this new uh, projection support tool is going in this direction. It will not, it's work on, let's say, uh, surfaces which are close, flat or close to be flat, big areas. As an example, the, the first one, let me pick this base on, uh, of this Chunli uh, character, which is, in fact, the print that I presented before. You don't see my screen, which is totally dumb. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, now it's better with the screen. Then this is this, uh, uh, this model. You have the base, you have just two parts uh, of the model for the sake of this demonstration, and you want to do uh, all this support. Then before, what you had to do is to go in the prepare section, uh, uh, going in the support section, uh, uh, choosing your, uh, of course, the tip uh, size, the, the, sorry, the preset for your support, and 
finding the beginning and doing a click, a click, a click, a click. Of course, after that, we added the uh, inline support just to do quickly with the shift key by default. The, the hotkey is enabled by default. It just adds support on a regular uh, uh, distance between a starting point and a ending point, which can be, of course, a quick process just for a base like that to go that way. And you can go around. We also added the support painting, just as a reminder, you click and you drag, and like that, you can paint your support very quickly. By the way, if you didn't notice, if you press the control key while using this uh, uh, support painting, I'm pressing control key now on my keyboard, and if you paint, you can remove like that your support. And it's, it's working on all supports. If you did supports one by one and you want to quickly uh, uh, delete some of these supports, you can just do this control and click and drag to remove the support. It's not only working on support created by the support painting tool. Then keep that in mind. But if you want to do something like this base, you can, like I did before, uh, doing a click and drag, going around, and after filling with everything like crazy like that, it can be time consuming also as well. Let me undo that. And that's why we introduced this uh, um, uh, support projection system. It's located in the automatic support. It's not really a full automatic support, but it uh, uh, um, makes the process a lot easier and faster. Uh, you go in auto and you click on this start support projection. Why this is start support projection? Because you are starting the tool. The UI is changing uh, to just display what is needed for this tool. And then you can start to do this operation. Let me just cancel and show you something before. I forgot to show something. As you can see, my 3D model uh, has uh, multiple holes, five holes. And if I go in the tool, you don't see these holes anymore. Because the first step is to define an area where you want to have all your supports. And this area can be just this base. And on top, you have three selection tools, which is a sphere, which is like, in fact, a brush. And you see this is kind of uh, not very nice. Why? Because uh, if you display the, th uh, the topology of the model, you have this wireframe mode. You see, we see there on screen all these polygons. Then it's just filling each polygon with a color. Of course, you won't have the same result on this part, which have a lot more polygons uh, uh, from your model. That's why you may see sometimes this big polygons everywhere because of the structure of the 3D model. OK, let me just close that and going back in the tool. Sorry, let me just remove my support there. OK. If I select the good model, it would be a lot better. Sorry, not my day today, like I said. <laughs> OK. And Sphere tool is a kind of brush tool. The surface crease is looking at the angles, uh, just, just uh, uh, more the surfaces by themselves, sorry, and the surface angle is looking at an angle and trying to keep the continuity of the surface to still be under this seven, uh, for me right now, seven degrees angle. Let me just start with the crease. And as you can see, it detects some part, sorry. Uh, uh, it just lets you highlight some areas. And of course, if you increase some values, you can increase like that the detection. And you see it just detects the angles, uh, more the areas. Like that, you can quickly select some areas. But it has no meaning to select something like that because it will create supports everywhere. This is not what we want to do. You will understand when you will, understand when you will see the result. Let me just go back to something smaller. I click on this one. And you see, I have everything which has been selected for the base. And you can see this small green arrow on the 3D model. This one will define the projection of the support. Yes, I mentioned this is why the, the tool is named support projection, because we'll do a projection of a kind of uh, uh, mathematical surfaces and uh, the support will be, which will be based on that. And it's a just projection on a surface. And this arrow gives you the direction where the support will start uh, on the surface. That's why it's redesigned to work on these flat surfaces and not uh, all type of crazy uh, uh, surfaces. Then my selection is good for now, and I will click on Preview Supports. And after you see a fraction of seconds, not even a fraction, less than a second, it just display you on screen this surface, and you see this hole is to better understand the result. This is on purpose. And Litchi Slicer, by default, provided you 
uh, this result. Of course, you can tweak everything. All of that is based on parameters. You have this global uh, uh, tab, which is roughly the basic setting. But if you have more control, you can switch to the border tab and infill tab. And you may see also a preview in real time of the modification that you are uh, doing. Uh, let me just look at, uh, sorry, there is no giveaway, uh, Medibro. Uh, this is really to uh, uh, teach you things about Litchi Slicer, then very sorry, there is nothing to win uh, 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 today. Uh, um, anyway, you just go back to that. Uh, and then you have these options. You can use the border option, which will just put support on the border and the infill. Let me just disable the infill. You have the border there. And as you can see, there is two borders. Let me just do something, remove that. OK. <laughs> uh, this is what you see. And what you have on screen is only support going on the border of these detected areas. And as you can see, going also uh, doing also the boundary of your holes. Then just that can be in just one click. Uh, uh, you can be pretty quick. Of course, the best thing is to have uh, uh, the support internally. And for the infill, we have three options. One of them is this concentric mode, which can be quite interesting sometimes for a lot of things. And it's nice to see on screen. Uh, you have the grid, which is doing a kind of even grid for this infill. And you have also a random uh, uh, um, uh, um, a kind of even randomized placement for your supports. Uh, of course, there is benefit of one of the others, depending of your needs, uh, which is quite important. Uh, yes, if something is wrong for the stream, someone saying that uh, uh, is the presentation blurry. Of course, look if you are in full HD, and I hope you are in full HD. Uh, and for me, the stream seems to be okay from my computer, and I hope it's fine. Um, okay, then you have these basic options, and you have a little bit more control, like the offset. The offset is the distance between, you see, the surface, the border, and uh, the supports. We will see that more into details later. And of course, the interval, uh, which is the distance, you see, between each support. Depending on the tip size uh, of your support, the type of model, the density you are looking for, of course, you have a little bit of control. The interval of 5 millimeters almost yeah, is quite uh, uh, important. And you see just below the number of support which will be added to your 3D model. Be very careful. Sometimes we, we look at this model and say, oh, that's not a lot of support. But if your 3D model is quite small, it may be a lot of support. Then just keep that in mind. Uh, uh, my 3D printer now, I think it was uh, the M5, if I'm not wrong. Then it's already quite a lot of support. But if you want to have more control, you can go in this section, border. Let me just remove the infill for now. OK, the border. And uh, like I said, you can control a little bit the parameters, a little bit, quite a lot, in fact, if you want. The offset, like I said, this is the distance between the border of this selection, this area, and your supports. Right now, this is 0 0.4 millimeters. You need to consider the tip size. If my tips of my support, which are, if I'm not wrong, 0 0.5 millimeters uh, uh, right now for the medium preset supports, um, in fact, you need to look at the middle. If it's 0 0.5, uh, if you want to be just on the boundary, you need to look at this 0 0.25. Let me save, let me, let me oh, sorry, put 0 0.3 like that. And you see my uh, 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 tips just for the boundary have been closer to the edge of the model. If you change this value, of course, it, it will be further and further from the model. There is no really need for that, but you see, you can change that. And this is in real time to see the result. And then you have this interval, like I said uh, just before, which is a distance between each support. You can, if you want to go faster but still keeping a little bit of control, you can put a distance which is not too far, uh, sorry, uh, uh, not too close, sorry, and after that adding, if you want, some manual support to improve that. Or you can use other sections, you will see that uh, later, like the Z-influence, which will work on the distance based on uh, uh, between the ground of your printer and the top of your print. Most of the time on the base, we put a lot of support at the beginning of your print to be sure it will succeed to print. And for the top, you may want to reduce this density. Or it can be imp important for the infill, a lot of the beginning, at the beginning of the print, and less on the top of the, uh, the, the print. Anyway, I will show that just after that. Let me just remove a little bit 
uh, uh, remove, sorry, reduce a little bit the interval value, and you have the support preset. By default, I put medium, but if you want to have heavy supports just for the boundary, you can use this preset right away, which is based on the printer, the, sorry, the preset you have in Litchi Slicer. Okay, uh, let me just stick to, uh, let, let's go to heavy. Uh, and like I said uh, just uh, uh, before, there is this Z influence, like that. Or you can say, okay, based on the Z value, you see I put a crazy value. Let me just increase slightly, the, uh, sorry, reduce the interval. You have a lot of support at the bottom, and the higher you go on the Z axis, like that, the less support you will have in terms of density. Then you can control something like that. Or you can also change a little bit. Let me just go back to the medium support. Let me uh, decrease a little bit with the influence. And you have also as well this uh, island's influence. And if you increase that, nothing appears on screen. Why? Because for this island's influence, where it's really start to print your model, I'm using a different preset. Right now, this is the same. I'm still in medium. But if I switch, let's say, to heavy, you see that the bottom, it's using heavy supports. And then at this stage, it switched to, let me just zoom a little bit more, heavy support, switch to medium support. Let me just switch to light support. You will see the transition will be uh, uh, more evident. Then these options, of course, are not mandatory. But if you want to have stronger support at the beginning of your print, you can use this function. Of course, I put quite some value. I can reduce it a little bit to be smaller, a, a, a smaller factor. And like that, I have a better control on the bottom. OK? Sorry, it's a lot of technical information. But like I said before, if you want to have something simple, you can stay in global. But if you want to have more control, you can work that way. And of course, a legislator will keep these settings for the next time. Then uh, someone like me, I just set the setting I like. And most of the time, I go in the tool, do my selection, click OK, done. Then in a few seconds, you can work that way. Uh, let me show you now the last option, an option which I really like, especially when I'm doing very large prints. Uh, you can see something in the background. Let me go back to uh, um, this. Uh, you may have this, see this uh, uh, print in the back, which is one meter tall. Uh, uh, it has been printed on the Mega 8K printers. I will show that a part of this model. Uh, for the, uh, the holes, the cap holes uh, functionality. This is a big print. But when you print something like that, you do a lot of support. A lot of surfaces like the dress, the bottom, before it was a lot, a lot of time to click all these supports, switching the density. Now, this is in one click, few set, in few sliders to switch, it's done. It's a game changer. The bigger you will print, the more you will love this functionality, trust me. Let me go back on screen. OK. Um, then, like I said, I really like this double uh, uh, border option. It will add another, uh, uh, let's say, ring of support around this boundary to be sure that uh, the larger will be your selection, the more support you will have on this boundary to be sure it will be very, very stable. Something that a lot of people uh, mis, uh, uh, misunderstand or uh, perhaps not consider uh, it's when you do your, your, your prints, especially small, if you do miniatures, these small models, it's not a big deal. But the bigger you will print, the more stable it needs to be. Because if you don't have enough support on the boundary to keep your model really in place, it can move, it can move slightly a little bit during the peeling process going up and down. And if you have a, just, just moving, let's say, for 10 microns, just shifting slightly, you will have these big layer lines. And sometimes it may just wobble a little bit because it's not very stable. This variation is just few microns, but enough to do not nice and clean surfaces. That's why having strong support on the boundary will be interesting. And this d double border uh, uh, option is to go in this direction to give you more control. And when you are fine with that, you can switch to the infill option, enable that, and then choosing your option. Let's say I want to have a grid then a more regular pattern like that. You can change the offset. The offset is the distance between this boundary of support for the border and then this infill of support. 
then you can increase that or not, really up to you to see what it is. Of course, depending on the pattern, the grid, random, or this concentric mode, you may not have the same result. As you can see there, it's not close enough to have a support. I may have an area without support there. Then for very uh, uh, mechanical shapes, the grid is fine. Sometimes for organic, you may need to, you can stick with that, but perhaps adding one or two support here and there. Okay, I'll be faster for the other part of the, the, the other model, just to re-explain all these features right now. Uh, and also you see with the influence, same way, like that. You see, I increase with the influence quite a lot and I have more support on the bottom and less on the top. Uh, I think this is the same with the random, not random, I thought so it was. Uh, and I think the concentric, you see you have a more density of support there. It's a little bit less visible, perhaps I need to increase a little bit more, you see, more support there and less support on this location. Really up to you if you want to have something uniform. The thing is, like that, you can slightly reduce the number of supports on your model uh, uh, based, of course, on the orientation. Okay, and then you see this uh, 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 estimation of support, not estimation, the count of support, 517 supports. You see, just increasing my Z influence a bit more, I'm now at 466. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it can change a lot. The interval, uh, the distance between each support, this is the base. I don't need to have a lot of supports in between. Now I'm at 380. You see it, just changing some options can drastically, drastically increase or decrease the number of supports. Like if you want to go with a grid, now I have way less support, <laughs> not enough probably, but you can really uh, uh, go that way. Let me just remove a little bit like that. And let's say for the border, I want to keep uh, that more easier, just one boundary. I have 300 support, which is quite a lot. When I'm done uh, uh, with the infill and border, I click on this add supports. And all these supports uh, have been added quite uh, 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 fast like that. Something which is very important, and you may didn't notice that. I will show, show that in uh, uh, for the other models. Uh, now, if you go in support, you have the tags and you see all these tags have been added on the model and I think I have tags from the previous <laughs> stuff I did. Sorry, I didn't restart the software. Uh, you see, uh, you have the support for the infill, the boundaries, the border, etc., etc. Then right now for the infill, I have 218 uh, uh, supports and for the border, 70, uh, 73 and the influence, 17. I can select this one. Sorry, I thought it was working tag. Oh, sorry, assign. Sorry, I wanted to select. Sorry, my mistake. Okay, my support have been selected. You see, this is all the supports on the boundary like that. You can, if you want, change some settings. Oh, I don't want to have medium like that, but perhaps I want to increase having a join coin for my, just only for the boundaries, having a different thickness for the base, and why not having a tip which is slightly bigger, not 50, but perhaps, I don't know, 70. And with just these tags, you know this all, everything about the boundaries now have different settings in each slicer. What is also very important, and I will do just a, a little bit jump to, uh, uh, um, uh, how can I say that, uh, to uh, uh, another uh, addition of each slicer. Okay, I want to change this support. No, uh, I'm not very good with this tip. I would like to use for the tip op option, sorry, the breakpoint. I want to have a breakpoint. Then uh, a, a smaller tip size. You see, this is, this is a breakpoint. This breakpoint is just a sphere. And when you, I don't know, you, you are uh, um, just removing, not ever, in a very brutal way, uh, you are tearing uh, uh, your support, it will break there. And it will avoid to have a small hole on your surface when you, you are just uh, uh, removing your supports. And uh, I don't know, I would like to have for this midsection having a base which is a lot larger and uh, uh, the tip being uh, 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 the length a little bit longer like that. Mm, I really like this support. I can do now a control C to copy the settings for my supports. Uh, I go back in my uh, tags. I see I have my uh, active tags. I can select by tags. I just select all my borders like before and now I can do a control V and all my supports that I just copy 
uh, uh, just before the settings are applied to all this selection which has been made based on uh, 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 um, this boundary of support. And say, oh, why don't I have this one which has been selected? Because this one, uh, uh, as you may have noticed in the tags, act, uh, sorry, the select support by tags, we have this border Z influence. Remember, I edited the settings uh, to have this Z value taken in consideration, then there is a different tag for that. Then if I select this one, I can do my control V and now it has been done. Okay. Then this control C, control V, which is a, a, a very common action, now is working on the supports. And like that, you can quickly, of course, selecting some supports uh, using the tags. The tags, this is a functionality, unfortunately, unfortunately, sorry, which is not very used by people, a little bit hidden, uh, I have to say, in the software. But you can select your supports and creating uh, uh, very quickly new tags and then recall this tag later. Let's say you want to hide something. Uh, let's say just a, a side like that. Now at any time, I can go back in support, tag, select, side, they are selected. I can click on this small eye icon, uh, icon and I just uh, hide this support very quickly. And of course, I can unhide everything. Then don't forget about these tags. They are created automatically by uh, uh, some tools like this projection, the support projection tool, but you can create them very easily and reuse them as much as you would like to do. Um, let me just look at the chat quickly because I was talking a lot. Uh, uh, someone, uh, Ro is asking if Litchi Slicer is a monthly payment or just once. We are, we are just, on, we are only uh, subscription based. We provide a monthly and yearly subscription. Uh, you can unsubscribe at any time. Uh, uh, and for the yearly subscription, of course, uh, you, uh, um, uh, you save, of course, two months uh, of subscription uh, uh, if you want uh, to go that way. Um, and yes, uh, uh, Mayo Cat, uh, uh, Katy, I don't know if you use that in English, uh, this is this production support, a really magic, magic functionality. It's really a, a, a productivity booster. Uh, uh, things which are more for the support. Um, uh, t -t 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 sorry, I'm clicking the wrong way. Um, thank you, uh, Tom Proctor. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let me just show you some other example quickly, like this part of the character and also showing you where there is some benefit to use these support projection tools or not. Uh, if I want to support this model also which has some holes, I will do the same process, nothing which will be different from before. I select this model, go back in uh, uh, auto uh, uh, section, entering the tool and like before I can click, you see like this on my areas. If I want to remove an area, you press control like the control key when you click, like the uh, support painting, you press on control and like I said before, you can drag and drop and removing your support. And then like this, you can do your quick selection. Of course, having a different angle may have, you see, it may detect more or, 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 or increase the value, which will be of course a problem. Then, in fact, what you will do most of the time will be perhaps to change slightly this angle value to find what will be the best result for you like this. And as you can see, I have this area there which has been detected. I can try with the surface angle, which is not enough. Let me increase slightly if I can remove and like that you can paint or pressing the sphere and with control key press, I can like that just remove my selection. Sometimes it's faster to have something which works for most of the model and using the control key and with the paint brush removing what is, let's say, useless in terms of selection. Now I'm there, fine, previewing the support. Imagine before I was uh, uh, with something which was very similar to what I want, perhaps just adding this double border things and removing the Z influence like that. And uh, let me uh, remove the islands stuff and done. Like that. Let's say I need to have some bracing on the side of my model, not the beginning, useless, I would say. Uh, manual bracing, done. 
and my model has been supported in few clicks. It's not fully manual, it's not fully automatic, you just need to define your areas, but it's working well. <laughs> uh, let me just hide this, uh, um, this base and uh, uh, working that way. Now, where it can be interesting or not to use uh, uh, this functionality. As an example, I want to put some support on this area uh, where the model has been cut to be sure that when I will remove my support, it will not leave some, uh, um, let's say, artifacts, some marks, some impact of the supports on areas which may be problematic to send. That's why I try to do my support mainly on areas, uh, uh, I mean, not there where sending that will just uh, crash everything in terms of result. It would not be very, very nice. And using this, uh, uh, um, support projection tool on this model there. I start and now I need to do my selection. I can do like before, you see, for these big flat areas or close to be fat, flat in one click, it's working well. But if I do that, you see my arrow is showing the projection, which is the average uh, uh, distance. And if you want to preview the support, you can say, oh, this is nice. So sometimes you may see this uh, 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 empty areas, uh, then skip that. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, good. I do okay. And this is what you have on screen. The thing is, it's really working on a projection. Then what I did is a mistake on purpose, obviously. Like I said, it's not the miracle tool which will do support for everything. It's really oriented to these big areas. And like I said, it's working on a projection. What I mean is working on this area there to do the support have some meaning because this, surface, this part of the, this boundary of the, shoulder, uh, the, the hip, sorry, is going, uh, uh, is, is facing the bottom of the plate, then of course support going in the good direction. But there, Litchi Slicer has no way to add support because it's going, it will go through the model, then there is no need for something like that. Then what you can do, of course, is to use the control painting, removing that very quickly, like that, and now your support have been created. Or the other solution, let me just go back in the tool, like this, you can go back and define the selected area, like I said before, using the sphere with control key to say, I just want to keep this area. And now you can click on preview, or if you are sure of the result, you can even click on add this 97 support without going in the preview mode because you know your preset will work fine. I think I did something wrong there, <laughs> sorry. Okay, should have worked this way. Okay, then. That's why this tool can be very, very convenient. Another example for this shoe, let me hide the, uh, the body parts uh, for the foot there, same way. And I will conclude with that for this tool. I have uh, 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 this part there and I can click just the top part. Sorry, I don't know the name of this part uh, 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 in English. Click there. I don't need to have the boundary my supports. Let's say I want to go more an infill which will be concentric for this one. You see, like this, and done. Ready to be printed. Of course, if you want, you can go there and say, oh, perhaps I want to add something, have this one there to be sure it will start fine. Or this one may be useless. Like all type of supports in Litchi Slicer, you are free to edit, remove, change your supports. Consider that as a kind of accelerator, something which will improve, improve uh, sorry, uh, uh, speed up your process of adding support for these big flat areas. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not also, also very easy to use uh, uh, all these supports because it's a, a kind of forest of support. Don't forget you have this visibility section there and you can say, oh, I just want to see the contact point, which is exactly the tip of the model. You can even hide the white lines and then you can just work that way and say, oh, perhaps this one is too close. I can move it slightly like that, doing a click and drag like this or removing uh, 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 this one, you see? But even if you spend a little bit of time by cleaning some part of your model, it will be anyway a lot faster than trying to add all these supports one by one. This is what I do most of the time. I do a big batch, let's say, of these supports everywhere. And after I spend a little bit of time to see Okay, fine, not fine, adding then, removing this one, changing a few parameters, but it's really changed a lot. You see the center there is lacking some support. I may add this support, but perhaps a little bit too much there, 
And let's see, uh, I remove uh, this one, which are too close. And I say, OK, now, good to go. And my support are good. By the way, the hotkey to switch between the tip and the support is Shift V. Like that, you can quickly change the visibility of your tips, of your supports. In fact, it's using the last one. If you prefer to use just only the tip, Shift V will switch now between these two options. And top of that, if you want to use the line or not. Just a little bit of tip. There is multiple hotkeys like that in Litchi Slicer, then feel free to look at them. Uh, you can find in the preferences, sorry, this is extra information. Uh, you have the shortcut editor. You already have multiple shortcuts that you can discover there. And of course, recreate your hotkeys. Uh, as an example, I have a stream deck there. Then you can create some macros or whatsoever to uh, uh, use some functionality like that. Side information. Let me just look at the chat. If I'm looking at some stuff. Um, uh, Meokat is saying that the function is great, but it depends on the geometry of the model. Uh, the boat from the libra library can be tricky uh, when using this sphere on the side of the boat with strange results. Of course, it's not. Let me just show that in, uh, uh, as an example because uh, uh, this is a good uh, 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 comment. Let me go there. And if you want the bench to use the benchy and you want to paint your supports, of course, it will not be. Uh, uh, perfect right away. Sometimes you need to do this post process. Like I said before, if you want to go in prepare, uh, 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 start projection, okay, I click, I have everything, which is quite a lot. Past my angle was way too much. You can remove, uh, not that much. This is where painting sometimes with the, sp the sphere can be a lot faster than trying to have something uh, uh, very accurate. And don't forget, we are working on the topology of the model, the polygons, then if the topology is very bad or very low, it may not provide the best result. It's really up about the surface angles. It's not perfect for everything, but it can be very, very fast. And obviously, this is the first iteration of the tool. We have a lot of ideas for this type of tools, and it will be improved, uh, obviously, in the future. Let me just cancel. Uh, uh, okay, Julian replying to this one. Okay, then, sorry, it was a lot of uh, uh, information. Now we'll switch to, uh, 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 oh, sorry, let me just go back to uh, let uh, pop, 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 uh, load the chicken, our favorite chicken in Litchi Slicer. Let me remove that. And uh, uh, I will go back to uh, the hollowing functionality, and I will switch after that to the new uh, uh, way to create some holes and caps in Litchi Slicer. Uh, let me just move slightly uh, uh, this chicken, uh, uh, like that, like that. And I will do some hollowing, hollowing, 3D hollowing. Remove slightly the size, quality, update. And what I will show you will work, of course, in 2D hollowing and 3D hollowing. Then my model has been hollowed. And sometimes you create some holes to be sure you have drain holes for your resin to go away, uh, also for the air to go uh, uh, through, then avoiding to have some uh, traps. And you do your, your, your uh, um, um, and I will speak about white, red, and, and black uh, uh, after that. And say this one, or oh, I want or something which is bigger. In the pro version of Litchi Slice Off, you press the space bar, like for the support, you switch to advanced mode, and you can use this gizmo to edit quickly your holes, whatever, this, whatever it's the diameter or let's say the penetration values, you can move it like that. You can even go outside of the model if you want, not really useful, but uh, you can do that. I'm good with this one. And I want to reuse this hole, which was fine. Control C, going to this one, Control V. Now this Control C, Control V in terms of Parameters, uh, uh, of course, has been introduced in Litchi Slicer. This is only for the supports for now and, of course, for the holes. But over the time, we'll do more and more copy past uh, functionality inside of Litchi Slicer to be sure, again, it will improve and uh, make your process faster. Now, let me explain why there is some holes in red and holes uh, in gray or, I mean, gray or black. Gray is because it's a selected hole, and black, this is unselected holes. And you see these red colors. Why? Because when you, you want to export your 3D models, and you see it's really up, penetration. Okay. When you want to uh, uh, um, slice your model, you export from the cheese slicer your holes, you don't care if the holes are red 
are black, gray, I would say, because during the slicing process, litchi slicer will remove the pixels of the holes uh, from each slices uh, based on the geometry, the shape of the holes. Uh, and then this is just only a kind of post-process effect. But sometimes you want to export your 3D model to another software or you want, because I don't know, you are a content creator and you want to provide to your uh, uh, supporter, your customers, uh, let's say you're a Patreon and you want to provide all to your all supporters pre-supported model in STL files, you need to generate the holes. We introduced the uh, holes as an export file a uh, few versions ago. And this is where it's important because if you want to create a holes on this location, it will not work to export the hole as a geometry, as uh, this structure inside of the model. The holes need to be, like you see there, going through the surface, the surface of the model, uh, uh, really uh, from outside to inside, or inside from outside, without uh, uh, touching a partially the model. As you can see for this one there, you see it's going, the end is going up to, uh, there is no, on the boundary there is no contact with other surfaces and if you go just down there is nothing. While this big red one is going, let's say, everywhere. If we want to have clean holes, we need to put them in a good location which will generate um, a clean surface. That's why we put that in, in error. And to avoid bad exports, if the hole is in red, it will not export this hole. The hole won't be generated. That's why this is very important to be sure that all your holes are in gray color if you want to export, transform the geometry. If you just want to slice in the it's not a, it's not a problem. But if you want to export, this is quite important. Why I mention all of that? Because let me switch to another uh, uh, model, not new scene, sorry. Uh, um, I will switch to something which will be quite bigger. And I will switch also to a bigger printer. I will switch to the Mega 8K from Frozen. And this is a part that you may recognize. Let me switch to the main screen. Then for this figurine there, this figure in the statue, <laughs> this, this size, uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind of horn uh, on the uh, left side of the character. Then this is this model. You see this is quite big and it has been printed in one part in the Mega 8K. The Mega 8K is 40 centimeters tall. You can print quite some big model, but as you can see, there is no support in this version, but it fits barely the printer. I just had to tilt the model on the side. Let me switch back to the screen. You see, I had to tilt the model to be sure it was fitting the bonding box of the model. And you need to consider uh, as well the support where they will be located. And I really like to print big, but it's a lot of thought that you need to have. And this model, obviously, it's a lot, a lot it's a big shape with a lot of resin in it. And obviously, we had to create, I had to create some holes to be sure that I was able to drain my resin for the print and more important, avoiding the suction cup effect. If you don't know what is the suction cup effect, this is when the, the, the print is trying to stick or unst uh, sorry, unstick from the FEP film or going down and pushing the resin. If there is no drain holes, the resin try to go out or the air and all that and it put a lot of pressure on the model. That's why sometimes your models just crack, fall from the supports, having all types of issues. A lot of user errors, I would say, are based on hollowing models which doesn't have drain holes or drain holes not put on the good location of the 3D model. Then if you look at this one, and let me just look at the uh, 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 um, clipping bar, you see this is this big model. Uh, uh, and like you see, this is quite tall. Everything has been hollowed except some part, like this one. If I go in hollowing blockers, let me just show that, I put some hollowing blockers. Hollowing blockers are just this type of uh, uh, virtual shapes. You can put them on some location and it will just avoid the hollowing to be put on this location. Because sometimes you have some parts which are smaller and bigger and you may have some very small holes which go to bigger areas and you may have some resin trapped there, which is not very good. Then like that, I said for all these parts, it's a small one, but a little bit of hollowing, very difficult to clean inside with the IPA alcohol. We prevent the, uh, uh, the model to be hollowed on this location. And the same for this one. But as you can see, most of my holes are, like I said before, on the part where I cut my model to do the assembly. Like that, 
if the holes are there, there is no impact of the model. The only problem is with my holes being on this location, if everything has been hollowed before, all this part, just forget about this hole because I will switch to that after that. Imagine I didn't put a hole on this location. I just kept this hole there. Then everything there will be a big, big hollowing without drain holes and it will be a huge suction cup. My other solution is to use the hollowing blocker and to block everything there to be sure I won't have any hollowing on this location. Then it will start to hollow on this, uh, uh, just on the first drain hole. I'll be safe. Yes, but it will be a lot of resin that I need to print. Then not very good in terms of uh, money spent in this resin. And uh, uh, after that, it's a lot of white put on my print because it's a big print, a lot of resin that need to move up and down everything. And uh, yeah, not very good. And a lot of white to put, of course, on the head of my character. Then for me, hollowing was a, a, a must do operation. Okay. Uh, then that's why I put this drain hole there. This drain hole seems to be small. It's not that small. <laughs> uh, this is 7.6 millimeter. Then this is quite large uh, there. I need to have a hole which is quite large because a lot of resin will go on top, hair as well, which may be trapped, it needs to go there. The reason I was using for this print was the uh, uh, frozen aqua uh, uh, gray 4K resin, uh, which is fluid enough, but uh, it's not the, the, the most uh, viscous, viscous? Uh, viscous uh, the, the resin which has uh, uh, the, the, the stronger viscosity. It's quite fluid, which is fine, but the uh, less fluid, the more viscous will be your resin, the bigger needs to be your holes. And this is very, very uh, important. Yeah. Uh, yes, Meokat, really look at suction cup issues. Sorry. Meokat say this is an important, uh, this is important to learn. I keep saying suction cup uh, uh, on the Discord when I see failed prints. Yes, exactly. And really uh, look at the last, uh, 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 last stream I did about this biotech model because I speak a lot about drain hole, suction cup, and also using this suction cup detector there. Let me just show you an example. Uh, let me remove this hole and running the suction cup uh, detector. It takes some time because it does the analysis of a 40 centimeter model. Wait for it. Uh, toot toot toot. And you see, Litchi Slicer detects some suction cup areas. If I don't put a hole on my model, everything there will be a big suction cup. And this suction cup, if I move my clipping bar there, it's a 14 centimeter suction cup, something like that, then for sure it will be a fail print. It will break at some point. And when you start to do print for this size, you do your best to avoid having fail prints. Okay, let me just undo for my hole. Now if I run things again, uh, like the suction cup, suction cup detector, you will see that it will just start a little bit below and some other location, but small ones are not a big deal. I will not comment of what is on the chat right now. <laughs> uh, very quickly, because uh, about the frozen Mighty AK, some users have issues about the latest firmware, uh, which introduced the camera support. It's not at all on our side. This is on, unfortunately, the manufacturer of the motherboard, which provide a faulty uh, uh, firmware, which affect also other slicer with some other uh, uh, versions. We are not the only one. We can only wait for the fix to be uh, provided, nothing we can do. Very sorry about that, this is very annoying. We have a mighty 8K uh, oh, there on the other room next to me uh, and uh, I don't upgrade the firmware because of that, nothing we can do. Very sorry for that. Um, uh, and Bob, I will go back to, uh, I will just switch to your point now, <laughs> you will understand. And you see, I have few suction cups, but they are small and for me, this is fine. Okay, now I have this hole. Let me just uh, uh, delete all of these, suction cup. Okay, my model is fine, but I have these holes there. But uh, the problem is I will print my model with, uh, at the end, a 7.6 and sometimes bigger holes, uh, which will be uh, left there. And on a big model like that, it will be annoying. First thing, I put my hole on the back of the model. 
like that, it will be less visible. But I would prefer to have a model like that on a rotary table, would be nicer because I spent some time to sculpt the back also of the model. Uh, then that's why we introduce in each slicer this new functionality for the 3D drain holes conversion. You have this 3D model, your 3D model selected. I can select this hole there and doing some operation. I can just create the cap only. I click on it and as you can see, a cap, sorry, a typo there, a cap has been created and the cap is exactly what I have on my hole there. And now this is a pure geometry. I can support that as a 3D model. I can go back in layout section, rotating my model like that, uh, uh, moving on top, putting few support and done. Obviously, this is what I did for this model uh, uh, on the back. Let me delete this uh, uh, cap. And you have other options, like you may have noticed, holes only. If you do that, it will create just the hole inside of the geometry because sometimes some users want to lose their dynamic hollowing functionality because they have big holes and they want to have the, the supports going through the holes of the 3D model and not having the hole being impacted, just avoiding the holes, the dynamic holes. Then it can be very useful. What is important as well is if you look at your model there, you can also, let me do that for everything, I will keep in place my holes and I will create the cap and the hole, uh, the holes, sorry. Why? Because like I said before, I want to export my 3D model uh, uh, as an STL file with all the support for, uh, let's say, my customers. Then you want to do everything, keeping the hollowing, uh, keeping, converting the, lo the hollowing from dynamic to a kind of baking. You kind of flatten in the geometry, uh, uh, like a layer in Photoshop. You flatten, you validate the uh, uh, hollowing and then creating the holes and keeping the cap. I decided to keep my, all the cape in place, capes, sorry, and I can define the gap between the hole and each cap of my 3D model. And it's set to 0.5 millimeters. It's very, very difficult to provide you an accurate, uh, the best value for that. Why? Because it depends of your resin. If you are using, let's say, a low quality resin and you tend to over expose, uh, expose your model, your resin will uh, uh, f uh, uh, in, um, uh, sorry, expand, and if your gap is too small, it will not fit. Of course, you can send a little bit, but for me, 0 0.5 is good because the hole by itself will expand, sorry, the cap, sorry, by itself will expand, and the hole inside of the model that you created will shrink the hole by itself because everything will expand. Then you may have a little bit of expansion of both sides, that's why having this small gap in between can be great. And like I, like I said before, now I want to keep the cap and creating the holes. I click on this last option. Wait for it. Okay. And you may have seen this small animation. Now all the cap have been created with 0 0.5 gap uh, in between, which may be perhaps a little bit uh, uh, too big there. If I go back in layout, sorry, my mouse is going way too fast. Um, I can select a hole there, uh, switching to translate, not, uh, uh, you see, and everything has been created like that. And you can support everything. Let me undo, go back to my model. Now, uh, something which can be very important about these different options that you, you may have found, uh, like this hole, uh, sorry, this cap only. What I really like to do for me, because I do, of course, everything in Litchi Slicer, I uh, uh, slice my model and export, of course, my slice to my 3D printer directly. Uh, I like using this uh, only, this uh, uh, cap only functionality. By doing that, it created my cap there. I'm able to support it, but I still keep the dynamic holes. Why? Because at any time, if I want to edit my hollowing of my 3D model, let's say I want to change the uh, internal uh, 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 quality, or I want to increase or decrease the thickness of my model, I can still edit my model, my uh, uh, hollowing as much as I want. It stay dynamic as much as possible. But I can generate just the cap by itself. When I did the print of this model, this is what I did. I just keep, uh, I kept, sorry, the uh, 3D hollowing being dynamic. I just generate the small cap like that. I print it, putting back, gluing that, a little bit of sending, put it to have a nice transition, and it was done. Then this is uh, 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 one of the new functions. 
exactly this is a, a field with a little bit of milliput or green stuff or whatsoever you want to use. Uh, it was uh, milliput for this one. Uh, I use a lot of milliput for this model. Uh, anyway, then uh, um, this functionality will help you to provide to your customers or for your own needs uh, a better control of your model. Of course, the best is to find the, 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 the best position for your cap to be less visible, but sometimes you have no choice for hollowing purposes or just to save resin also as well. Uh, that's why this function can be handy. Obviously, this functionality is only for the pro version of Litchi Slicer. I forget to tell you that, that uh, the support projection is also for the pro version of Litchi Slicer, uh, uh, which is important to keep in mind. By the way, someone creating support by projection in version pro can provide the scene to someone who is using the free version of Litchi Slicer. It's only the, uh, uh, using the functionality which is limited to uh, the pro version of Litchi Slicer. And by the way, you have a trial version of Litchi Slicer. You can click on top there. Sorry, I'm already in pro uh, to, to do a trial, to have a trial version of Litchi Slicer, which is a 30 day trial. You have plenty of time to discover the software. Then. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, all for these uh, new features for the resin. Just to recap very quickly before switching to the filament, which will be a little bit faster. Uh, um, new printer supported. I mentioned the uh, uh, Anycubic and Elegu, but uh, also we added the Creality Mage and Mage Pro printer. Uh, we added uh, the new Peopoly uh, uh, um, Phenom XXL V2. Um, I don't know who it's, if this printer, I didn't try it, but I really love the Forge, which is based on, uh, I mean, the Forge has been a foundation in terms of screen, and uh, if I'm not wrong, and especially motherboard uh, for this uh, XXL V2, but uh, I think it'd be interesting for people like me who large, uh, like to print large models. Then multiple printer, which has been added, uh, this new projection, uh, uh, support projection system, uh, this copy past uh, functionality, uh, this new uh, holes uh, 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 additions. Of course, we had a lot of uh, bug fixes and improvement here and there. Multiple things which are hidden, uh, of course, inside of the application that you don't see now, but you will see in the future. Uh, of course, we always work on a lot of things. And now I will switch to the filament side of Litchi Slicer. Let me uh, do a new scene, and I will be uh, uh, very uh, uh, simple with that. Uh, let me switch to uh, uh, my filament printers. And in filament printers, I have multiple printers there. Uh, let me switch to the Neptune 3 uh, uh, printer from Eligu. Uh, I have a, a, a profile there, let's say, anyway. And I loaded uh, the Benchy. As a reminder, Litchi Slicer is providing uh, 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 sorry, is doing the support of resin printers and it's been now six months that we do also the support of filament printers. I think we support something like 400 printers uh, in terms of profiles. We constantly adding more and more printers uh, 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 and of course you will see that more and more in the future. Uh, and on top you can switch between uh, resin and filament and obviously you can select your own printers. We have a, a, a color code, blue is for resin and orange is uh, for filament. Okay, uh, then in uh, this last version of Richie Slicer, we added the uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, support, network support for uh, filament printers, for printers who, which support this functionality, mainly based on uh, um, a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint. Uh, and uh, clipper, uh, clipper based 3D printers. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, we have uh, uh, in terms of uh, technology uh, for driving a printer, you have the firmware which, which is Marlin, which was the oldest one and the most popular, which was, let's say, at some point very good, but slower and slower compared to, let's say, clipper. They did a lot of change recently, and there is multiple things which arrive on the market right now to speed up the process. Uh, and if you want to connect this printer, this Marlin-based printer, to a computer, a lot of people are using a kind of a small computer like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, they install a, a Linux distribution, which is Octoprint, which is fantastic, amazing. Uh, a lot of plugins and so on. They plug the printer, and then it's become Octoprint, which uh, uh, um, let's say drive the printer. You upload your uh, 3D model, your G-code, uh, uh, sliced by Litchi Slicer, and then you can monitor the print and so on. And then you have Clipper. You will see that in action uh, in few uh, few minutes, uh, which is let's say the next level a lot of customization, which is more complex, to be uh, uh, very honest. Uh, there is still some improvement to do on Clipper or variations of Clipper to make that 
more human friendly, I would say. But in terms of technology, this is amazing. A big community around that. Uh, a very good open source system. And then in Legislator, we added the support for this uh, uh, system to upload and also monitor inside of Legislator. If I open my 3D printer, you may have noticed, because I, I move my mouse very quickly, uh, we have a Veron 2.2 uh, 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 300, which is not a 300, in fact, which is a, a 45 by 45 uh, printer there. Uh, uh, and by the way, why I lost the... the um, oh, why I'm done. Okay, let's go back to something else. It was working just a minute ago, or perhaps the light is in the dark. I lost the webcam. Anyway, uh, let me go back to, sorry, to printers. And for this Neptune 3, like, like I wanted to say, uh, it's connected. This is, you don't see it on screen. It's just next to me uh, there. I have a Neptune 3 Pro from uh, Elegoo. Uh, and it's driven by a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint being installed. Then how to connect your printer and slicer to this Raspberry Pi and Octoprint. You edit the parameters. And you have this uh, Ethernet Wi-Fi section now, which is not configured. You can click on Discover, and it will look at your network there, and it should discover Octoprint with the IP on your network. You link to the printer, you wait a little bit, and now it has been connected to Octoprint. If you want to look at that, you even have access directly in Lichislicer to the web dashboard of the printer. You wait a little bit uh, for the UI to load, and you are ready to directly uh, uh, doing your operation. Let me just close that, meaning that if I slice, let's say I prepare this 3D model in Litchi Slicer, let me just go down for the keeping bar, I'm editing, tweaking my uh, uh, profile, my override. As a reminder, we, a reminder, we have uh, uh, all the profile that you can use, let's say, and set once for all, and then for each scene, each project you will do, you can override some settings uh, uh, default settings to just adapt them to the scene. Let's just skip to do that. And I want to export. I can slice. Okay, it has been sliced, and I can send that wirelessly to Octoprint. I click there. I can say, oh, this is my Benchy. And you can even click on print after upload. I will do that for the other printer. Click on OK. It has been uploaded. If I go back to my 3D printer uh, and then my web dashboard, need to, to load again, sorry. You need to have some uh, elevator music in the background. Perhaps we need to add that in Litchi Slicer. Julian, we should do something like that, I think. Why well, taking some time? It was working. This thing is not on Litchi Slicer side. This is on the Raspberry, uh, Raspberry uh, uh, Pi side. Come on. OK, there. And now, state operational. I have my file, my folder. And you see, I have my Benchy. And I can start my print right away. I can monitor, say, oh, I want to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the head going to, uh, uh, have not 250, but uh, degrees like that. Just send the command. And uh, uh, it will just, you see, target. It will go right away and start to hit my nozzle. Then this is just for Octoprint. And of course, if your Octoprint have multiple plugins, you can access everything directly inside of the slicer. Let me just uh, 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 put, that, uh, put that to zero right away. OK, off. Let me close that. Now let me switch to another printer, like the BQ Hurricane, uh, which was, uh, I think, the first commercial printer to have Clipper integrated in the printer with a dedicated motherboard for that. Uh, it's an amazing printer. I'm not here to do the promotion specifically for printers, but we print a lot on this printer. This is a very, very good printer. And same thing, I will do uh, discover, but for uh, uh, Clipper for now, we need to type uh, the IP like that. Uh, you search for it, you wait a little bit, and it found my Clipper print. I link the, the, the printer, it connected, and as you can see, I have directly in Litchi Slicer the access of, uh, uh, to the, the webcam, which is connected to the printer. Then I can monitor what it is. If I put my hand, you see my hand is already visible, now ready to, to go. And I mentioned the web dashboard. This is the same, obviously, for Clipper, uh, which is now loaded, and you have access to everything uh, about Clipper directly in Litchi Slicer. 
uh, like the camera, the previous print, uh, uh, everything like that. Uh, let me just uh, uh, close that. And like I said before, I want to slice my print. And I will start the print uh, directly like that. For me, this is good. I have very nice parameters, a good slicing. Everything is good for me. I send YC to Clipper. This time, I will uh, uh, click on Upload. Uh, um, lovely Benchy. Now we send that to the printer. Let me switch to, uh, um, OK. Let me monitor. Let me just wait to do it. You see, now I have this printing uh, percentage which appear. I can click on it. And you see right away, you have the printer, uh, which will do uh, um, the, um, the bed leveling. The bed is already uh, uh, at uh, 70 degrees. I preheat the bed to avoid spending too much time. But like that, you can monitor directly in Litchi Slicer. You can prepare other models. Your uh, uh, printer will be autonomous. And oh, sorry, we have a problem with the probe of the printer. Let me just uh, uh, start again. I love when everything is working fine like that. I will try just to touch the prop this time <laughs> to be sure it will working fine. <laughs> be fine now. <laughs> then let's wait for this print to, uh, uh, to start. Uh, it's currently uh, hitting uh, the nozzle. Um, then that's all roughly about uh, uh, this uh, uh, um, new functionality in Litchi Slicer for the filament printers when it comes to Wi-Fi support. We see we are looking uh, uh, to do better integrations. We know a lot of users, not all the users, but more and more users are going into Clipper, uh, also using a Raspberry Pi. And it was important for us to try to uh, make this uh, uh, connection uh, as seamless as possible. Of course, we, uh, this is, again, a first step. We have a lot of things we want to do for the filament printing, like for the resin printing. Um, you, you, you can't know how, how many nerds we have about 3D printing in the company. Obviously, we do 3D printing, it's not for nothing. Um, and we have a lot of ideas when it comes also for clipper, uh, for filament, for tools, improvement. This is only the beginning. It's been only less than six months that we release uh, this filament uh, uh, slicer. But even for resin, we have a lot, a lot of ideas. And really hope that you will uh, continue to follow us. Uh, I will just look at the chat. If you have some questions right now, even for resin, uh, please uh, uh, ask your questions uh, while waiting for the printer to start. It's uh, uh, close to be. Uh, ready for uh, hitting uh, everything. Why wow, it's not hard starting. Sometimes I don't understand why Clipper is okay. Should be fine. Now it's starting. Okay, finally. Uh, uh, then, if you have some questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, let us know uh, again, like I said at the beginning, if you want. Uh, uh, to have more live stream like that, or perhaps more uh, on a specific topic. We try to uh, 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 send some survey uh, 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 later, especially on Discord, what you're looking for, which type of knowledge you are looking for when it comes to Litchi Slicer, or perhaps 3D printing. We know a lot of users have a lot of frustration when it comes to 3D printing because they see a lot of amazing prints, and when they start to print, there is some failures. Then perhaps a stream to explain all type of failures why, what are the causes, and, uh, um, and I lost Litchi Slicer, I don't know why. I love that. Uh, 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 all these things uh, uh, about 3D printing, there is probably a lot of things that we can explain and share with you uh, uh, about uh, 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 everything uh, when it comes to 3D uh, printing. By the way, you see my printing is still back. You see, I, had, I don't know I don't know what happened. Uh, it's still working. There is no problem with that. I'm back to what I was doing before. Uh, it can happen that sometime uh, we have an issue with the software. It will start to, to, to uh, uh, bring back your 3D model, and your print is still in process. This is why things like uh, Clipper and Octoprint are great, because they make your printer totally autonomous uh, at some point. And, in, in, and also in terms of, uh, I would say, um, stability, 
uh, uh, it's saved directly in uh, uh, the memory, let's say, of uh, 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 the printer, or uh, um, not always through an SD card. Uh, um, and the good thing is, the problem is SD card, when you, you send uh, uh, something through SD card to a printer, especially for resin printing, you can't imagine how many people I see online saying that, ah, it's not working, uh, 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 I have a failed print. Uh, and when you see the result, because it's just, the, the print just stopped in the middle, 99% of the time, this is a faulty USB stick or, or, or micro SD card and all of that. Always purchase high quality uh, memory stick, memory card, sorry, uh, so, uh, memory card, USB sticks, because it will change a lot of things for uh, um, your, your workflow. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't really see the printer uh, uh, printing right now because this is uh, uh, under the head, but it's printing, printing quite fast. I think I put 150 uh, millimeters, no, 120 millimeters per second in terms of speed. It can go higher, but uh, uh, you see, uh, this is why uh, clipper-based printers are great because you can print uh, very, very quickly things. Let me just switch to the ZV-1. Okay, still working. Let me see if I can just move there. I don't know if you see in the background, you have the, uh, the uh, Neptune 3 Pro, also which we are using quite a lot, uh, with the also uh, uh, Neptune 3 Max. <laughs> I really love this printer. Big printer, but very nice. Okay, uh, thank you uh, everyone. If you have some questions, uh, this is the time to ask them. Uh, um, uh, okay, then uh, if you don't have any questions or special comment, I don't know, for resin and filament, then uh, thank you very much for being with us for this live stream, which has been longer than I was expecting. As usual, I talk quite a lot. Uh, if you, uh, um, like I said, if you want to uh, uh, discuss more with the team, more of the community, join our Discord server. We reached uh, 17 or 18,000 people a few days ago. Uh, I think 18,000 people on our Discord server. This is a quite active community for resin printing, filament printing. We also have creators sharing uh, their latest production. And it's a great way, to, great way to discover new creators, new 3D models for you to print. Uh, we always share our content there. We have people like uh, Coralie, which was in the chat a few seconds ago, uh, uh, also answering questions. We have uh, Derek, we have Sean. A lot of people in the team uh, uh, are there to exchange with you, communicate with you about 3D printing and of course Lichy Slicer. Uh, don't forget to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you don't see that in the chat. Uh, uh, even myself, I started more as a member of the company, my own Twitter account as a CEO of the company. Uh, you can follow me uh, uh, on Twitter at uh, Toma, uh, uh, Toma Lichy at Toma Lichy. Uh, let me just add that in the chat so you can find me uh, quite easily. Uh, I will try to be more and more uh, active uh, uh, on Twitter. Uh, then feel free to uh, follow me. I will be very happy uh, to exchange with you uh, about everything about 3D printing, also sharing with us your prints, what you do. This is very, very important when we see what you do with uh, uh, your 3D printers and of course with Litchi Slicer. Uh, it's a lot of motivation. The more we see what you want to do, what you try to achieve, the result of your print, the happier we are uh, uh, because we do that par passion. Uh, like I said, you see this print, like I say, behind of this character. This is a print I sculpted myself. I prepare myself. I print myself. This is the biggest version. Uh, I love printing other people models. Uh, we like to paint more and we are a lot in the company to do that. If you don't know, we also have the Creative Friday, which was today. Uh, today was a Creative Friday. We, have, we do that each couple of weeks. Uh, the Friday, it's, we don't work. We do creative stuff in the company. We do 3D printing. Uh, uh, we do uh, FDM printing, resin printing. Some people do some painting on miniatures, figurines. Uh, we have also people doing creative stuff, which is not related to 3D printing, like uh, uh, doing laser stuff, uh, uh, all of that, or doing researches about 3D printing, uh, learning modeling software. Then, uh, we are really driven by creativity in the company that the more we see creativity, the more we see what you try to achieve, where you fail, where you succeed, this is a great source of inspiration for us. Then that's why this is important for you to share with us 
what you do with Liquid Slicer and your uh, uh, resin printers. And also feel free to give us your ideas about features. Uh, we think a lot about other things, uh, about a lot of things, because like I said, we do a lot, then we face a lot issues or things which are missing for us, then as users ourselves, we do functionality. But it's not only us, this is everyone. And sorry for this uh, long talk, but it's very important uh, for you to know about all of that. Um, okay, then thank you very, very much, uh, MMQ crew. Uh, uh, we do more and more stream like that. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, we'll be able to share more things. I'm sorry about the time of the day. This is Friday night, French time. Uh, we'll try to do uh, more live stream also on Saturday, perhaps later during the day, the night for us, to be sure that our fellow people in the US continent uh, have an easier access to our live stream. We know we are in Europe right now, we are in France, uh, we are in Bordeaux. Uh, uh, it's not very easy, but we prefer doing at least a stream like that during this time, but not doing a stream then. Uh, let us know. Let us know also as well if the quality of the, uh, the audio, the image, and all of that was fine. If I talk too much, not enough. Uh, uh, feel free to do some critics in Discord or there in the chat. And anyway, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy 3D printing, enjoy Litchi Slicer, and see you very soon in future live stream. Bye-bye. <laughs> I know I'm shutting down the stream. <laughs>